So guys, this is gonna look a little bit different because I have to shoot this at a different time. Uh, what I didn't realize is actually my talking portions. I'm getting used to this GoPro. It was actually completely whited out and terribly unusable footage. So that's unfortunate, but I did want to quickly come back and explain uh, just kind of what I was showing in the bushcraft basics of making a pot hanger. So the first thing I wanted to note was that the very first one, and I do apologize for this, but the very first one I was showing you guys from afar, I didn't quite do it right. And uh, a quick note or a quick secret to doing these pot hangers correctly is to baton at an angle. And so you really have to baton at, you really have to baton at an angle like this, if you guys can see, hopefully. And you know, you have to do your X's like this and like this. And then when, of course, you do your back cut, you're going to do that as an ang at an angle as well. So all your batons have to be at angles. And that's how you do it properly. And if you get practice enough, you can do this quite fast and quite effectively, from what I've seen. And as well, the book shows that you can do this properly trained in about 15 to 20 seconds, which is really fast. Another thing I would recommend when making pot hang pot hangers is if you do do this I would highly encourage just sticking with batoning because if you notice once again with my first one I was trying to rush it and I actually nicked a piece of wood off of here because I wasn't batoning but if you do batoning that's actually impossible to happen so anyways I just wanted to share those few things uh, as well when batoning in the snow if you guys noticed uh, I actually laid this piece of wood down sideways to what you're batoning and that's just to act as a catch because when you're batoning on snow obviously snow even if it's compact it still isn't tough enough to take the blast of a baton so generally you want to lay a piece of wood down to help catch your piece that you're working on so just a few tips i've learned throughout this whole thing so anyways i mean if you want to get uh or if you want to learn more about the bushcraft basics or if you want the book i've been showing check the link in the description below i have an amazon link to it in the description below and uh, that's where you can get it and that's the book i'll be referencing another book that i will be referencing uh, eventually hopefully in this series is uh, Shelters, Shacks, and Shanties by DC Beard and I'm going to be referencing that one and hopefully doing some fun remakes where I essentially take shelters from that book and use tarps the different tarps I have to remake those shelters but for the 21st century so that they actually look really nice updated and refreshed so, and they're also will be light and easy to pack and make. So anyways, guys, so that is essentially uh, another book I'll be uh, using in the f near future. And uh, if you want to get that one, uh, you guys can go find it. I, mean, I probably won't link that one quite yet. So anyways, guys, that kind of gives you an idea of what's coming up for Bushcraft Basics. In addition to that, I will, of course, continue to do knife and axe and saw basics as well because uh, it's going to be a complete thing, hopefully. Uh, so anyways, guys, hopefully you've liked this quick video. Pot hangers are really super useful for doing a bunch of things, more than just hanging pots. They're also really good for, uh, if you want to use them as stakes, uh, if you want to reverse the pot hanger and not use it like this for holding up a pot, but if you want to help stake something down that's a corded material and you don't want it to come up, such as, say, you want to stake down the tarp like this one and uh, it has different pieces of cord uh, where you can actually stake it down using this such thing so it can be really handy in multiple different situations anyways guys don't forget to comment like share subscribe and uh,